I'm in the river of life. Yeah. I'm in the river of life. I swear to God, I'm in the river of life. Holy Lord, I'm in the river of life. Oh yeah, river of life. Oh God, river. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. The Lord wants to touch you. The Lord wants to heal you. He wants to minister to you, even in that area of physical pain, even in that area of emotional pain, even that broken heart. The Lord wants to come and make you every bit whole. So we're going to ask God and he's going to touch and he's going to heal. And we just believe by faith, knowing that God is going to turn things around. God is going to transform form your situation and your circumstances. God is going to work that miracle that you have been believing for. Oh God, we humbly come before you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would touch those listening right now, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that they would speak with other tongues, that they would prophesy, that they would minister to the saints, that they would lay hands on the sick and they would recover, that they would cast out demons, that you would confirm your word with signs and wonders following. Oh, Jesus, we need your touch. We need your healing power. Father God, we are reaching out in faith. Father God, we are touching the hem of your garment. And we thank you, Lord, that your virtue and your healing is flowing. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, minister to those who are lost, even those who have lost their way. Father God, just bring Bring them back to the fold. Even the prodigal son, he who was dead, came back and was now alive again. Those who have been dead spiritually, Father God, just bring them back into your kingdom, into your fold. We are the sheep. You are the shepherd. Father God, just touch, touch. Truly, let those know that have sinned, that have fallen away, that it's not too late, that they have not done those things that you cannot forgive them for, Father God, but you have a heart of love and compassion and you want to touch them right now. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is so good. He's been leading me to the book of Jeremiah. And he says in Jeremiah 7, verse 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. And he's talking to the Israelites. He's saying, you're not trusting in my word, the word of the Lord. You're trusting in lying words. And I found that people who go to psychics, and we know that that is a demonic spirit that is operating, and you are opening yourself up to the devil and his evil ways and his evil cohorts hearts, right? But it's, oh, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? And it's like they are hungering for this demonic spirit to give them a word. Even a friend of mine is like, oh, am I going to get a series? Am I going to be an actress on a series? No, you have to wait on God. You have to seek the face of God because now she's holding on to that lying word. And that word is not from God. And it's not going to profit. Lying words will not come to pass. They will not profit. And you think things are going to happen one way, but they aren't because God is going to make them happen another way. You trust in lying words that cannot profit. Only the word of the Lord is going to profit you, is going to bless you, is going to bring salvation and healing and deliverance and prosperity and abundance into your life. 
Jeremiah 7, 13. I spoke to you rising up early and speaking, but you heard not. And I called you, but you did not answer. The Lord is saying he rose up early to speak to you, but you did not listen. You did not hear. You did not respond. You did not answer. The Lord is calling you even this day. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will do whatever you tell me to do. I will go wherever you tell me to go. Have that surrendered heart. And maybe things don't exactly make sense now, but you have a peace. You have a knowing that this is God's perfect will and he is going to bless you in it. A very interesting thing happens in my life. Right before I go to bed, I hear the voice of the Lord saying, open the Bible, open the Bible. I'm going to speak to you. And if I open the Bible, I get a revelation from God. I get a word from God and it's powerful. And if I'm not obedient, I can't open the Bible in the morning and he's going to give me that same revelation. He may give me different revelation, but my point is it's so important when God speaks to you that you do it at the time that he tells you to do it, that you need to be obedient to his word. And then we're in Jeremiah 7. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 23. But this thing I commanded them saying, Obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. The Lord is looking for obedient children. And what is the result of obedience? He says, it will be well with you. God will bless you when you walk in obedience to him. Obey my voice and I will be your God. If you truly want God to be your God, you need to obey his voice. You shall be my people. You shall walk in obedience all the ways that I have commanded you, not some of the ways. You can't say, well, I'm obeying God in this part of my life, but over here I'm living in sin. No, in all the ways that God has commanded you, he is saying, be obedient to me and I will bless you and it will be well with you. There are no shortcuts. There are no situations or circumstances where you sell your soul to the devil and you will come out on top. No, you may have the wealth, you may have the riches, but you're not going to have the peace of mind. You're not going to have that family peace that you desire because peace comes from the Lord. And you're going to look at everything that you have and you're going to say, I have all this and I'm not happy. I'm depressed. I'm oppressed. I'm suicidal. I'm addicted, filled with lust, filled with rage, filled with anger, filled with greed. Only God can heal you and only God can touch you. Your money cannot buy those things that only God can give you. And God's only going to give you those things when you turn to him, when you surrender to him. And he's going to restore back to you that which was lost. He's going to restore that marriage as you walk in obedience to him. Jeremiah 7, 27. Therefore, you shall speak all these words to them, but they will not hearken to you. You shall also call to them, but they will not answer you. Oh, great. How would you like it if God said that to you? Like he said to Jeremiah, okay, you're going to speak all all these words to them. They're not going to listen. They're not going to do it. They're just going to ignore you and make fun of you. 
right? But God says that you need to go and tell them. And those who hear will hear. And those who don't want to hear, they won't hear. But for those who reject the word of the Lord, their blood is on their hands. But if you don't tell them, then their blood is on your hands. So praise the Lord. It's not who receives it or who doesn't receive it. It's the fact that God tells you to speak his word and that you're obedient to him. And this is so sad in Jeremiah 7 verse 31. Um, the Lord is convicting the sin of Israel and he's saying they've built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not neither came it into my heart. They're burning their sons and their daughters to the bales, to Moloch. They're killing their children. And of course, that was displeasing to God. The Lord has given you that child. The Lord has breathed life into that child to cause that child to grow and glorify him. And no one has the right to take away a life except the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. And then in verse 34, then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem, the voice of mirth, the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride for the land shall be desolate. The land would be desolate because of their sin. God was going to take away their joy, their gladness, their happiness. The land shall be desolate. So we need to repent. Even as a nation, we need to repent before God. We need to say, God, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for sinning against you. I'm sorry for letting little things get in the way. Father God, I'm sorry for trying to fight my own battles. Lord, I give you everything. I give you my life. Lord, you are going to fight for me. They will come against me, but they will not prevail in the name of Jesus. We are going to stand still and see the salvation of our God. He is a miracle working God. And when you feel weak, he is strong in your life. Then we're going to go to Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart departs from the Lord. Cursed is the man that puts his trust in man, puts his trust in the word of man, which usually turns out to be false. Cursed be the man that trusts in in man and makes flesh his arm and whose heart departs from the Lord. Examine your heart. What are you hungry for? Are you hungry for the word of God to go forth into the nations? Are you hungry to know God in a deeper or more intimate way? Praise God. Are you hungry just to serve yourself in the flesh and get ahead in the world? Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Is your trust in man? Is your trust in your bank account? Is your trust in your real estate and what you have in your education? Or is your trust in the Lord? Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Is the Lord your hope even this day? Put your trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart in every situation with everything that is within you. Trust him. Do not lean to your own understanding. 
but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That's powerful. Jeremiah 17, 8. These are the promises of God. When you trust in God, you are going to be like a tree planted by the waters. And I have to tell you, in my garden, those plants that get the most water are the ones that are healthiest and that grow the fastest and look the best. I want to be the healthiest. I want to grow the fastest and I want to look the best. So I want to be planted by the water. I don't want to be dried out, not bearing any fruit, not producing. So I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to stay close to the Lord. And that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes. The heat is going to come, but it's not going to burn you. Your roots go deep into that living water and that living water of the Lord is going to keep refreshing you. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to keep making you new. You're not going to be afraid of bad tidings, of evil news, because you know that you are built on the rock and your faith and your trust is in him. You shall not see when heat comes. You know, I have plants out there and I water them, but when the heat comes and it's really, really hot, some of those plants get burned and um, that doesn't make me happy. So when the heat comes, the Lord says, you're not going to get burned. You are going to be blessed. You are going to thrive in the midst of that difficult situation. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Even in the year of drought, when there's no water, the Lord says you are not going to cease from yielding fruit. You are going to keep yielding fruit. Praise God. When there's drought all around you, you're still going to be producing. You're still going to have abundance. Praise God. You are blessed when you trust in God. Verse 10, Jeremiah 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. He searches the heart and he tries the reins. He tests you. Abraham was tested. God tested Abraham. Hallelujah. Was he going to be obedient to the voice of the Lord or was he going to allow his son, the son of the promise, the son that God had promised to live? He chose to obey the voice of the Lord and kill his son. He was going to kill his son and God stopped him. But God knew that Abraham loved him and his voice and his word and his plan more than anything on the entire earth, more than his only son, more than the promise that God had given him. Praise God. God is so good. The Bible even says that Abraham knew that God could even raise the dead. So he trusted in God in everything, even when God said, kill your only son. He did exactly what God told him to do. And then God came through for him. God is going to come through for you when you do exactly what God tells you to do. Watch what he does. He's going to do exceedingly abundantly greater than you could ask for, think of, or imagine according to the power that works in you. 
I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The Lord is going to bless you according to what you have done in your body, according to the fruit for the kingdom of God that you have produced. Jeremiah 17, 11, as the partridge sits on eggs and hatches them not, so is he that gets riches and not by right. He shall leave them in the midst of his days. At his end, he shall be a fool. So we're talking about the rich man who gets riches, but not by doing the right thing. Thing, by lying, stealing, uh, conspiring, colluding, right? Again, those riches are not going to last. The partridge is sitting on the eggs. She's doing all this work, but they never hatch and she never gets the chicks. In the same way, this rich man who has gotten, it's not necessarily even a rich man. It's just somebody who has gotten riches by illegal gain, not by right. Again, you know, praise God. I praise the Lord for my house, but on both sides of me, both of my neighbors, you know, hallelujah, they didn't realize there's a property line and they're supposed to put their fence on their side of the property line, not way on my side of the property line. So God is not going to bless that. God is not going to prosper that. So if you want lasting riches, then you be honest and you be fair, and you be right, and you pay your people. You pay those people who work for you. It says, you shall leave them in the midst of your days, and at his end you shall be a fool. So you're not going to be able to enjoy these riches. You're going to die, and you're not going to be able to, hallelujah, do the things that you want to do with all these riches that you've gotten by illegal gain. God is going to take you off this earth. Jeremiah 17, 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed. Praise God. God is our hope. Those who forsake the Lord will be ashamed. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. He is our fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Jeremiah 17, verse 13. The Lord is your hope. You need to put your trust in him. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake you shall be ashamed because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. He is that fountain and water brings life. What happens to a plant when you water it? It grows. It lives. It doesn't die. It produces fruit. So when your hope is not in the Lord, that's death to your body, death to your spirit, death to your emotions. The Lord wants to breathe new life into you. He wants you to drink deeply of his fountain of living waters. And then Jeremiah 17, 14, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Yes, Lord. There are so many people who are suffering in their bodies right now. Father God, heal, heal in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I cast out 
every power of darkness. I rebuke that oppression and that depression and that torment, that spirit of confusion must go in the name of Jesus. Jesus, send your healing power by your stripes. Your children are healed. Thank you, Father God, that the power of the Lord is present to heal. Just receive the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's healing your body. He's touching your body. He's ministering to you in that area of need right now. Even those joints, those ligaments, even that virus is leaving. I curse that virus to the root in the name of Jesus. Even that incurable disease, the doctors gave you no hope, but the Lord is giving you hope right now that he is the healer and he can do the miraculous and the impossible. Keep on going. Keep on serving him. Keep on stepping out in faith because God is going to bless you. God is is healing you. He's restoring what the enemy has stolen away from you. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Father God. We are those soldiers of the Lord and a good soldier does not get entangled with the things of this world. So help us to stay focused on you and the call of God upon our life. Help us to serve you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We glorify your name. Thank you, Father God. The Lord says he is greater than the voice of the enemy. The Lord is going to um, squelch that, that voice, that negativity, uh, that attack, that assignment, that accusing voice. He's going to stop it and it's going to cease even now. Hallelujah. We break that power of darkness. We command that yoke to be broken now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. You are victorious. The Lord is going to win. You are going to come out. Hallelujah. Smelling like a rose. You are going to be vindicated and God is going to bless you. You could not do it on your own, but God is going to do it for you as you stand in faith. Praise Jesus. Behold, they say to me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow you. Neither have I desired the woeful day. You know that which came out of my lips was right before you. He's, Jeremiah is saying, I prophesied the word of the Lord. And if God has given you a word, you need to stand on that word. You need to speak that word. Be not a terror to me. You are my hope in the day of evil. The Lord is your hope in that day of evil. Put your faith in him. Everything may be falling apart all around you. It's a new day. God's doing a new thing. Watch. It's going to work out as you put the Lord first. Let them be confounded that persecute me. Those who persecute you, those who lie about you, they're going to be confounded. The Lord is going to bring them to nothing. But let not me be confounded. The Lord is not going to allow you to be confounded. They are coming against you. They are persecuting you, but they will be confounded. Do not allow yourself to be anxious and distressed and worried. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Your enemies will be dismayed.